Hi everyone, Mark here again. I'm the founder of the Arts and Culture Network. We're over 120,000 strong now across our eight LinkedIn groups, but this is the best fun bit for me. This is where I get to introduce you to one of our new full members and I'm joined by Neil Fairhead. Neil, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's very kind of you. Thank you so much for being one of our full members. Uh, it was lovely to meet you recently face to face, which we don't always get to do. And I should I should point out to our um, our audience that you you came to one of our face to face uh, face to face events at the uh, Royal Society of Arts and brought with you a Picasso, which was a selfie opportunity for us all. So thank you so much. People are still talking about that. <laughs> wow. Which I gather you went on and sold. Uh, I think it's sold, but not definitely. Oh, OK. Well, fingers crossed for you. So thank you so much. Please take a, a minute or so to introduce yourself and tell us about the work you do, where you're based um, and uh, and how other members might be able to make useful introductions for you. Fine. That's great. Well, first of all, thanks, Mark. I, I think you're doing a great job and you've got a very innovative um, organisation which has been amazingly successful. So congratulations to you. Thank anyway, you. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I'm really quite old now, but I've been doing this for a long time, 30 odd years um, buying and selling art, where I, I've never thought of um, having a gallery. We've always worked from home and it's a husband and wife team. Uh, I do, all, uh, my, my wife does all the difficult bits. She does the accounts, she does the marketing, she does the internet and me, I swan around buying and selling the art, having coffee with friends and drinks and all sorts of exciting things like that. What we do is we deal in works of art by modern masters, artists like Picasso, Matisse, Chagall, Miro, Brack, Dali, Hockney, Banksy, um, all this sort of thing. We tend to buy them, we pay cash and we have quite large stocks of them. Uh, our route to the market, we've got quite a number of routes to market. First of all, we've got a lot of lovely private customers. Then we do quite a lot of sales online. We're very active on four or five host websites. We do occasional art fairs and we do complete shows with galleries. So every day, every week, we're buying things and we're selling things and we have a large stock and it can be seen on www.fairheadfineart.com or you can follow me on Instagram, Fairhead Fine Art Limited. I've probably used up my minute, but that's me. <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much. So wherever this appears, there'll be links galore um, in, in the associated copy. So thank you for that. How big is your stock at any, any one time? Well, I guess we own two or 300 works of art. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It tends to be divided into uh, a number of basic groups. Um, first one, which we started off with, was School of Paris, because I'm a great fan of Picasso, Matisse, Chagall, Miro, Brack, Dali, um, these great um, middle of the last century artists. Then there's quite a big tranche of modern British. And lastly, American pop. And we're doing more and more American pop at the moment, Warhol, Liechtenstein, and particularly Keith Haring. Wow. That, I, 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 please don't tell me publicly where they all are because that would be <laughs> inviting visitors. Um, but I'm, I'm keen to know, um, I'm a big fan of that show on the television, uh, Fake or, was it Fake or Fortune or something, I think, where... Right. Um, where they where they go they they do all the sleuthing to try and track down the provenance. Um, what 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 one tip would you give somebody um, who's in a position to who's been offered something and that uh, is there a is there a special nose that you have to develop to sniff out something that might not be all it um, suggests it is? Well, um, you've got to do your due diligence. And that means you've got to convince yourself that the thing is right before you can actually sell it to somebody else. Uh, if you're actually buying something, you probably don't have the hat of the dealer. You just want to make sure that it is what, what it's supposed to be. So 
first of all, you should try and buy it from someone reputable, somebody who's got a pedigree, who's not going away, who's got a reputation for um, honesty and integrity and, and so on and so forth. Secondly, do some research yourself. Don't just leave it up to the guy that's actually sold it to you. Go online, Google it, find what similar ones look like, look at what the signature should look like, look at what the paper should look like, look at what the colours should look like, and get a feel of what it should be buying. You should be buying. Quite often, you'll get something, it's described, and it doesn't look right. And the reason it doesn't look right is the six examples you've seen before were a different colour or a different shape or a different signature. And it stands out. It's in your face. But if you haven't looked for it, you haven't found it. Yeah, that's good advice. I imagine the phrase, if there is any doubt, there is no doubt, probably applies. Um, if, if if the merest thing doesn't feel right, it's a it's walk away um, in those circumstances, I, I suspect. But oh, that's that's good advice. Um, excellent. Right. Um, where are you based, Neil? I think it's uh, North London, aren't you? Yeah, downtown Golders Green. Downtown Golders Green. Love it. Excellent. Um, OK, so we're going to have a bit of fun now. Thank you for that introduction. Um, if you're thinking of buying or selling anything, probably get in touch with Neil. I'm sure he'd be happy to share a bit of advice. Um, and so... I'm going to create now, if you don't mind, and I should point out to our watchers, our viewers, that I've given you very little warning of this. So this is completely off the cuff, which will be great fun. We'll rattle through it because it's a it's a year long journey. I'm going to create your fantasy cultural year to the from the answers to 10 easy questions. Um, it always pulls out anecdotes and surprises. So are you ready, Neil? I'm ready. Excellent. <laughs> now, uh, it starts with, what's your favourite building? Favourite building? Do you know, it's going to be the Tower of London. Nice. What a lovely place to start. There we go. Now, OK, so I'd like you to imagine that you're sitting in, I think I'll put you in an, in a rooftop City of London uh, garden in June at 6 p.m. And one of the things you can see beyond the rooftop bar of this beautiful um, space at the top of a building is the Tower of London. So you're sitting there in the sunshine, 6 p.m., admiring the view of the Tower of London from above. It's probably one of those hotels nearby, near Tower Hill. Sure. Um, and to the right of you on your table is a book. Now, it's either your favourite book of all time, it could be a book that has stayed with you all your life that you reread, or it could be something you've discovered recently. But um, what's that? What's the book that would be next to you in those circumstances? Oh, that's a bit of a tough one, really, isn't it? Mm. Uh, probably has to be something historical and probably has something to do with my interest in Byzantium and medieval Roman Empire. I think I would go for the Alexiad of Anna Comnena, which was written by the daughter of the Emperor Alexis I, who was an 11th century emperor, and he was one hell of a guy. Um, very dodgy character. He won, his, he won his wars by treachery and deceit rather than battle, but he was very cunning, very successful, and the book is amazing piece of medieval history. That's lovely. You've brought to mind certain well-known American politicians. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mr. Trump would probably do well to read the Alexia de Van There we go. I was going to say no names, no pack drill, but you beat me to it. <laughs> Excellent. OK. Um, now, on your left in the sunshine at 6 p.m. is a drink of any description. Uh, the beverage of your choice. What's there? Ooh, beverage of my choice. I think a good beer. Excellent. Nice cold lager or a bitter? Oh, I think a, a, a bottle of Beck's would do me nicely. Perfect. There we go. It's all yours. It's nicely iced in an ice bucket. Now, you're, you're feeling quite pleased with yourself because you've had just come from a meeting at the Tower of London where you 
teamed up with a, a city organization that likes to think of itself as philanthropist. And they'd like they've heard about you and your expertise, and they'd like you to to do a year long study in the country of your choice of the arts and culture landscape in that country. Um, it's first class all the way, highly paid, everything's sorted out at home, um, all expenses paid, and you could you get to choose which country you visit and which city is your base. Wow. It's a, it's a nice trip. It's a nice trip. Do you know, I think I would like to do perhaps a book about Picasso and his friends. And I think I'd go to Paris. Excellent. Right. I'm putting you in Paris. Um, not yet. We're going to get on a plane. So um, you're on the plane. OK. It's all been sorted out. First class all the way beautiful apartment in in Paris for you to live in um, for a year as you study the arts and culture landscape across um, Paris. It becomes a bit of a fantasy trip as you're all about to find out. There's a magical element to it. Um, you're on the plane um, and the steward hands you a note and the note is from the city organization that are funding your, res your research year. They'd like to study you while you study Paris okay um, and the first thing they'd like you to do is to limit your musical intake to one very specific musical genre for the whole year at the exclusion of all else so what what really quite specific genre of music would you choose to be the only one you listen to for a year you know I think it'll be very boring I rather like the Beatles excellent you can have the Beatles there's there's enough there. Absolutely. There's enough there. Yeah. Excellent. Love it. Okay. So on go the headphones on the plane, Beatles. Um, you can't listen to anything else and other than the events that I'm going to introduce you to. So um you arrive at uh, Charles de Gaulle, and there is a group of very friendly uh, Parisians there holding your name up on a on a card. Um, they pop you in a limousine and they take you to your apartment where you've given a few hours to settle in. Um, but they want to take you that evening to a dance performance of some description. Now, tempting as the Moulin Rouge would might be in, in Paris, um, you can choose um, any dance performance that you'd like to see. Any dancer, living or dead, any dance group, any dance style, but they're going to take you to the theatre to watch a dance performance but because it's a magical theater you can press a button and see anything on stage so what would you want to see well i'm going to spain very shortly to see it in spain but i like calypso so i'd probably find a calypso seller somewhere calypso uh, do you mean calypso or flamenco from flamenco i should say oh, <laughs> i'm going to say you're in yeah. the wrong continent for calypso <laughs> sure that's fine. Flamenco, yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, my brother is a cellist and he teamed up once in Seville with a, a flamenco dancer, a male flamenco dancer, and did some improv um, and uh, did some festivals. It's, oh, it's incredible. Wonderful. It's 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 probably one of the dance forms that's as close to its origins as it can be. Um, sure. I would just. Right. So, yeah, flamenco show now. They want to take you out to dinner after after fl the flamenco show. Um, Paris is, of course, um, no stranger to Michelin star restaurants, and um, you can choose the the national cuisine. So, what would you, what national cuisine would you like to have for dinner? Oh, I'm struggling to remember its name, but there's a restaurant on the south bank which my wife and I occasionally go to when we're feeling flush or something to celebrate. And it's where Napoleon hung his hat when he was a young officer. And they do a fantastic dinner. But it's a long time since we've had the money or the celebration to actually do that. But um, it, it'll come to me, the name of the restaurant. It's very <laughs> historic, been there for 250 years and French cuisine at its best. It's not the gun, is it? Procopius. Le Procope. Oh, I think I need to make a note and go and visit. How do you spell it? What is it? 
What's it called? P R O C O P E. It's expensive, mm. but it's very good, and you need to book yeah. a little yeah. time in advance. There, in Rotherhithe, there is a restaurant, a, a pub called The Gun, um, and it's a it's dedicated to Patrick O'Brien, who wrote all the um, uh, Master and Commander series of books, the um, Aubrey Matterin books um it, the, the romp through the Napole napoleonic navy um right yeah that's a wonderful uh, pub as well it must be similar age i should think but procope i love that procope okay um it's french is it yeah sure yeah uh french french cuisine so you in you're in back in paris let's assume there's a a procope restaurant in in paris that's where they're going to go so that's the the, the genre now um the next day is sport day and the parisians dis consider sport to be part of their arts and culture landscape and they've offered to take you to see any sport you wish for a couple of hours um what would you choose to go and watch oh a tough one uh i'm not a big fan but why not a soccer match okay paris paris saint germain you're on your way to go and see, <laughs> excuse me, that team. Excellent. Now, the next day is more your more your vein, I think. Um, in Paris is a wonderful um, fantasy art gallery that uses immersion, uh, projection, screens, and um, virtual reality to, to immerse people in the work of an artist, rather like the, um, the Van Gogh um, immersion experience. Now... It's so clever that you can put on a headset and step into the picture and see what was behind that body in the Caravaggio, if you wish. Or uh, you can you, you can literally walk around inside a painting as if it was a 360 degree space. Um, so, um, but you can only choose one artist, I'm afraid, to do that with. So whose work would you like to explore in that? wonderful high-tech gallery oh uh i think it's got to be picasso right you can imagine stepping into guernica can't, can't you i and, can and being in there so excellent right picasso it is now the next day is um to lighten the mood somewhat they're going to take you to the theater again and you can choose any play or musical uh, you can have the original cast you can have um whatever you want to see they'll press the button and there it is a play or a musical or an opera but you can only have one of those so would you choose a play a musical or an opera and if so which one would you choose i think shakespeare's othello okay excellent this is a this is, this is an increasingly enjoyable year i'm i'm having with you um <laughs> Now, the next day uh, is film day, movie night, uh, lovely cinema in the centre of Paris, plenty of legroom, lots of room for the drinks and the nibbles. Um, but your Parisian friends have said, please choose a movie that you love, that you think we will love, but probably haven't seen. So what would you choose in those circumstances? I think Sean Connery for Russia with Love, James Bond. Love it. <laughs> I've always I've always been delighted by the trivial knowledge that um, the dialing code for for Russia is 007. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if that was a coincidence. Um, that would be interesting. No, it can't have been. No, it can't have been. Right. From Russia with Love. Who was the female star in that? I'm trying to think. Um, there's always a, a chief Bond girl, isn't there? Oh, it's, it's beyond me, I'm afraid. Yeah, there's always somebody. I shall. I, I might have to binge watch them all again. Um, now, the next day is Hero Day. We're calling it Hero Day. We're booking a, a top, top restaurant in, in Paris for a nice leisurely two-hour lunch. And you can choose, you can invite anyone you wish, with us or not, and they will turn up. Who would you, if you could have anyone um, in, to chat to for a couple of hours over lunch in Paris, who would you invite? 
Well, my hero of the moment is the president of Ukraine, Mr. Zelensky. Okay. I, I, think he's, I think he's a hell of a guy. He's doing a hell of a job. And um, I admire him greatly. That's a lovely choice. He's probably a bit busy at the moment, but... <laughs> probably is. <laughs> okay, you can have Zelensky. That's great. Um, and... Might be a language problem. It might be. You'll have an interpreter. Don't worry. Oh, uh, all right. Okay. Uh, now, the next day is one of those days um, that don't come around very often. You know, from the mo you're in Paris, you're in your apartment. You know, from the moment you wake up to the moment you put your head back on the pillow later, the whole day is yours to choose whatever you want to do. Now, so no demanding, no chart, no tasks, no chores, no meetings. All your personal admin is up to date. Um, there is no reason why you can't choose to do whatever you do for the whole day. Now, we're laying on anything you need, helicopter, limousine, guide, whatever you need. For, for What would you want to do in Paris um, if you could do whatever you could do, wanted to do for the whole day? So you've got to stay in Paris, basically. No, no, you can, you can venture out of Paris. Oh, that's a tough one. There's so much to do there and so many people to see. Um, I've got a pile of friends in France. I think we'd all go somewhere for a nice party. And why not to the Procope again? Nice. I love that. Helicopter for 12, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Now, you're, um, uh, so you're, that's the end of your f fantasy cultural year meal so um you're on the plane on the way home um you've been asked to do a 30 minute talk about your summary that's all they were requiring you to do um and it's been great fun and on the plane you receive another note from the city foundation saying that we're 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 lifting the the restriction of your musical intake so you can now listen to things other than the beatles what would be the first piece of music you'd like to listen to that you haven't heard for a year? I think the 1812 Overture would go down quite well. That would, that would be smashing. Um, smashing wife, in more ways than one. Absolutely. My wife and I um, go to the battle proms when we can. Right. Um, and uh, because I know some of the musicians um, who I was with in the city of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra, we typically always get invited up to do the bells, um, which is great in, at the end of the 1812 overture. Right. And the, the cannon's going off over there. Brilliant. Um, yes, you can have the 1812 overture. So there you are. That's me done. That's you done, Neil. I hope you enjoyed your year away. I certainly did. <laughs> so wherever this appears, there'll be links to all of the, the, the work that you do. It was um, Fairhead Fine Art. Was that right? Yep. Yeah, fairheadfineart.com or, um, or fair... fairheadfineart.com. Yep. Excellent. Well, we'll make sure that people get that. But um, in the meantime, thank you again for being one of our full members. Thank you for coming to the events. Um, it's a great pleasure to have you part of the inner circle. And thank you so much for doing this today. Um, and I hope everyone who watches this will click through and connect with you on LinkedIn and um Thanks again. Well, it's been great talking to you and you have a great day. Thank you very much, Neil.